Well, hello and welcome. Thank you for joining our broadcast today. I'm Pastor Steve, and happy Mother's Day! We are so excited to honor all of our mothers today, and thank you to everybody who's tuning in. Special welcome to our Abundant Life family, to those from Canton Calvary Assembly of God, to those from Olivet First Assembly of God. We are uh, thrilled at the many, many people that are watching the broadcast and being blessed. We appreciate your your tuning in. We appreciate your comments and your shares, and and you just being a part of. Uh, what God is doing through Abundant Life Assembly of God in Brooklyn. And uh, we are uh, thankful for the technology that allows us to be online. Uh, we have ways in place if you'd like to worship the Lord through giving. Certainly our broadcast is free. Our ministry to you is with no charge. But if you want to tithe or give offering or uh, donate towards Abundant Life, you can go to our website, alaog.org. You can follow the menus or you can go to slash give, G-I-V-E. You can also find an address there to mail donations. But we're so thankful that for so many who have been supporting the ministry we've been doing. I also want to encourage you, uh, one of the most powerful things you can do to help our ministry is use uh, your finger and either like or share or subscribe. But when you uh, take this video and share it on your page or share it with a friend, it allows them to hear the gospel. Uh, when you leave a comment, it encourages us. And uh, when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, that helps you be able to be aware of updates and it helps us be able to reach more people. So I appreciate all of that. And uh, I'm excited today for an opportunity just to worship the Lord together, to have our, our hearts and minds together as we celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Ashley Harris, our worship leader and, and worship ministry director is gonna be leading us today with her husband, Austin. And uh, I'm so thrilled uh, with the worship they've been doing. And I know you're gonna be blessed. I wanna pray and invite you to join us in a time of worship. The words are on the screen down on the bottom. Turn the volume up, put the video on the biggest screen you can and join in. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the day you've made. Thank you for moms, of, uh, for every um, way that, that mothers influence our life. For some, it's our biological mom. For some, it's a, a mother figure. It's people who have influenced us. It's it's those uh, ladies who have had that motherly influence on in our life. We're thankful and we speak blessing and favor and encouragement over them today. And I give thanks for the privilege of worship. We ask your grace and your anointing on this time together. Let our, our hearts be knitted together as we celebrate the Savior and as we worship you, Jesus. Be exalted today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Once again, sing along. The words are on the screen. Join in and worship Jesus with us. We are so happy to be back with you guys for worship this week. At this time, I would like you guys to just stand up and spread out, uh, kneel, lay down, find a spot, uh, wherever it is that you can just have a moment with his presence this morning. Um, because he is there with you right now. His presence is with you. And we're just going to take some time to just praise him and glorify him this morning for that. Well, Heavenly Father, we just come before you ready. We come with open hearts this morning, ready to worship you. Father, you are so good. And you are worthy of all of our praise. So we devote this time to you, God. Would you be glorified this morning in Jesus' name. Amen.
you are here and that we can count on you and that we can find our hope in you no matter what. Thank you, Jesus.
Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me. Can we sing that again? There came the morning that sealed the you bring to each one of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, hey, let's go ahead and just continue to worship and hear what it is that pastor has for us this morning. Thank you. Mother's Day looks a lot different this year. Mommy needs a quarantine. And our moms may be spending a lot of time with their kids right now. A lot. Like, so, so much time. And even though they love their kids to the moon and back. Mommy! Where are you going? Sometimes moms need a little alone time. Mommy! You know. To recharge. Go talk to Daddy. Mommy! Where are you? Mommy! Are you in there? Mommy! We can see you. Up and up! I just want to lie in the sun. But no matter what's happening in the world, their favorite way to spend time is with their family. In good times, in hard times. Mom! Hi. You're breaking everything! In uncertain times. Thank you, Mom, for making time for us every single day. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I ask that you would watch over us as we go to bed and rest, that you'd speak to us in Bible stories and speak to us in... Well, thank you again, Ashley and Austin, for leading us in worship. And I hope you enjoyed that video that was uh, filmed by a ministry called The Skit Guys. And I bet a lot of our moms, especially those with children at home, can identify and would like a little bit of quarantine of their own. Um, but I also know that many have enjoyed 
uh, extra time at home. We do want to again say Happy Mother's Day to everyone out there who is a mom, who's an aunt, who's a grandma, who fills that mother role to uh, so many of us. And depending on your your stage of life, uh, this season uh, for some moms with children at home and out of school has been a little crazy, kind of like the video. For some of you, it's been quiet. For some of you, uh, it's been overwhelming. And for some, it's been lonely. And uh, to everyone out there, uh, we want to say Happy Mother's Day. Appreciate my wife, Melissa. And uh, we've added to her mix not only uh, three kids at home and out of school, but a new puppy. So she's been super busy taking care of all of them. And um, I know that holidays like this, Mother's Day, Father's Day, a lot of holidays, carry mixed emotions with a lot of people. I got to say, for, for me, I'm thankful uh, I was, I have a wonderful mom in my life and have pleasant memories and have joy as we celebrate Mother's Day. I had both grandmas who were close uh, in proximity to us and I spent a lot of time with and loved. I had two great grandmas that I got to see quite a bit and, uh, and I married into a wonderful family with a mother-in-law, some grandmas-in-law and, uh, and so for me Mother's Day is fabulous. Uh, I also know that for some, it's maybe been, maybe there's been loss over the last year, and this is difficult. I know for some, uh, your memories maybe aren't as pleasant as mine are. Maybe there's tension or strain, but I hope you can join us today in celebrating motherhood and celebrating the, the women who have had a profound impact in our lives in honoring the sacrifice, the work, the courage, the dedication, and the love that mothers bring to each of us. Well, COVID-19 has been an interesting season, to say the least. And uh, here in Michigan, we continue under a shelter-in-place order. And uh, many of these changes that, that we experience, they've been, let's be honest, stressful. And, and if life wasn't stressful enough, when you add uh, financial complexity when you add maybe kids in the home, when you add many are working from home, when you add that many are unable to work and find themselves unemployed, you add all of these stresses, just changes where we can't come and go as freely as we like to. Um, it adds stress to our life. We talked about that a bit last week and, and uh, as we looked at heart attacks. So in the midst of uh, all of this change, difficulty, and additional stress, I've decided to take up smoking. Yeah, it's only been about three weeks. Um, honestly, so far, I found it pretty enjoyable. I know it's not everybody's thing. I know that for some, they don't like the smell, and I know some don't like the cost, and I know others don't like the taste, but I've got to say, I've found it, for the most part, fulfilling and enjoyable. Now, I don't smoke as much as some do. Um, so far, it's been four times. Yeah, I smoked uh, chicken thighs. I cured and smoked a ham. I smoked chicken legs twice. And I do have plans, hopefully, uh, to smoke a turkey. So, uh, so far, I found it quite enjoyable. Um, I've been learning about smoking meat, not other things. And so I've been watching some videos, reading some things, and... You know what I find? It seems like at least everybody that wants to make a video on YouTube, uh, not, not only do they talk about the process of your smoker and temperatures and times, but everybody's got a secret rub, a secret spice, a secret sauce, or all of the above. Some of them want to tell you about it, and some want to sell it to you. But everybody's got the secret ingredient, the super key to, uh, to the best barbecue ever. Well, today I want to talk to you about a secret ingredient, but not about barbecue. We'll save that for another day. I want to talk to you about the secret ingredient to great relationships. Certainly, in, in this day when we celebrate moms, we're talking about family and home and households, but, but this is broader than that. Uh, we're talking about relationships in every aspect of life. I've got good news. I've found the secret ingredient. Not the only ingredient, but one that will absolutely help bring wholesomeness, health, and fulfillment to your relationships. Now, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 19 says this, Do not store up for yourself treasure on earth 
where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasure in heaven, where the moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For how many have heard this before? For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, really the context is probably speaking about finance, and that's certainly where our mind goes. But I've got to tell you, as I pondered this text today, I really believe all of us have a resource far more valuable than money. Can you believe that? More valuable than money. I would suggest our greatest treasure is something every single one of us has, and get this, every one of us has the same amount, and it's called this, time. T-I-M-E, time. Time is the one thing where all men are truly created equal. Now, we're not equal in gifts and abilities. We're not equal in budgets and bank accounts. We're not equal in opportunities. But we all are given 24 hours a day, 1,440 minutes, 86,400 seconds a day, 168 hours per week, and you get to choose how to invest them. I ran across this little saying. I thought it was really good. It says, time is free, but it's priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it, but you can spend it. And once you've lost it, you can never get it back. Time. Time. I was thinking about the New Testament church. And uh, in these days, it's it's a bit of craziness, let's be honest, but you know, something exciting is happening in the world, and that is that many people like you are tuning into online broadcasts and hearing the gospel, and many churches are seeing an increased number of people hearing the gospel. Well, there's a story in the church in the book of Acts, the very first New Testament church, that talks about a church that was having explosive growth without the internet, without video cameras, and without Facebook or YouTube or any form of live stream. Uh, and, and it's recorded in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. It says this, They, the New Testament church, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, imagine that, coming together, to breaking bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All of the believers were together and had everything in common. They had fellowship. They were together. They sold possessions and goods and gave to the people in need. Every day, oh my goodness, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God, enjoying the favor of all the people. Now listen to this. And the Lord added to their number daily those being saved. Now there's some spiritual practices there. They, they had the apostles teaching and they had prayer and they broke bread. But guess what else they did? They had fellowship. They spent time together. They every day got together, together, together. And the church was healthy. The church was growing. And the church spent time together. Now I know that this is hard right Today, at least in the United States and the state of Michigan, there's a bit of a challenge for us to spend too much time physically together. But there are ways to connect in this season as well as every season. And more time, it's never been such in history as now where we have multiple ways to connect. We have video calls and video chats. We have text messages and emails and instant messages and social media we have Zoom calls and, and a multitude of other apps to help you connect digitally. And, and if all that fails, the good old phone call works. What about Jesus? What about Jesus? How did he treat time? You know that all of the recorded miracles and teachings and, and public ministry of Jesus happened in a three-year period? He had three years to recruit his disciples and, and train them, develop them, win converts, change the world, and give his life as sal salvation, savior of the world. That's all three years. You would think that he would be on a dead sprint in life for three years like most of us try to do. Morning till night. Listen to a couple of verses that talk about Jesus. Luke chapter 7, verse 36. A Pharisee invited Jesus to come over for dinner. Jesus went, 
and it says he reclined at the table. He was relaxed. He was hanging out. He was having dinner. Luke 11, Jesus uh, finished. He went to another Pharisee's house, and it said he reclined at the table. Do you see a pattern here? Luke chapter 22, when the hour came, the Last Supper, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. You know, as you read through the Gospels, you see the life of Jesus, that, that he, though he was productive and fruitful and busy and active, he always had time to stop for someone in need, to stop and heal the sick, to stop and encourage, to stop and feed, to stop and help. And um, that should be a lesson for us, that relationships come at the price of time. I was thinking of some of the relationships and friendships in my life. I'm not talking about the ones on social media where you click and say, I have a thousand friends. I'm talking about the people I know, and I know their kids' names, and I know their spouses' names, and I know where they work, and I know what they do, and I know some personal things, and I know about their life and their heart and their passion. I was, I was thinking of the group of guys I work out with a couple times a week, and I'm not perfect. I miss times, but over the course of almost 14 years now, um, with guys have come and guys have gone, but when you spend a couple hours uh, a week with a group over the period of a few years, you really become to build friendships. I'm thinking of our men's lunch group at Abundant Life. Now, we haven't met now uh, since mid-March, but that group's been meeting for easily 10 years. And uh, I don't make every appointment, every lunch, and I don't stay for every Bible study, but I catch most of them. And uh, I was thinking, if I make 40 lunches over 10 years, that's 400 lunches with some of those guys. That's time. I have a group of pastors that I meet with once a month, and we meet at a coffee shop, and we talk and share and pray together, and and uh, and it takes a little time. But after a few years of those meetings, you build relationship. You get to know each other. I used to play in a worship band. Yeah, I had a bundant life. You know, back in March, we used to have a worship band. We will again. It's coming back soon. Uh, but we used to meet uh, every week to practice and every Sunday morning to practice and worship sets three times. And you spend two, three, four, five hours a week with a group of people. You get to know them. My deacon board, our home groups. Did I mention I have a fabulous wife and four fabulous children? One is often married, three are at home, and, uh, and I like to spend time with them. You know, we live in a culture that just likes shortcuts. We like dietless diets. You know, the one like the magic pill that makes me lose weight. We like effortless exercise. Put me on a machine that shakes me or something, but I don't want to work. We want to maintain deep, meaningful relationships, but we only want to give them an occasional email or a, a like button on a, on a social media post. We want to give an occasional text message. We've lost the art of spending time together. You know, I remember several years ago, I heard a message, a, a sermon. I listened to podcasts always in my car, and it was titled uh, Porches and Decks. I always remember it because they talked about how when you drive through an older town and you see some of those older houses, you know what the vast majority had? Big old front porches. Why? Because people would sit on their porch and visit and be sociable and meet with people and talk with people. And you know what modern culture has done, myself included, is we have decks. And we uh, build those decks in the backyard so that uh, we come home, we drive in our garage, we shut the door, we go in the house, and we go to the backyard by ourselves. <laughs> and, and again, it's great to be with family. I'm just saying there's a change in culture to where we used to be more social and invest time in relationships. And now we tend to isolate, and it's unhealthy. I mentioned earlier that I, I've been uh, exploring a new avenue of cooking called a smoker, smoky meat. And, and another thing I've been learning about cooking, and it's not something new to me, but it's been um, brought back to my attention again, is that ingredients matter. 
uh, not just getting the recipes right or the right ingredients, but what what kind of ingredients, like like oh, fresh cilantro versus that in a jar. They both do the job, but there's such a difference. Fresh garlic, crushing it yourself versus a, a dried spice. Fresh ground pepper or fresh mushrooms versus canned. Fresh Greek Kalmata olives instead of uh, just plain green olives. Am I getting you hungry yet? Feta cheese instead of cheddar. Uh, there's so many options that, that just add a little pizzazz to your food. The ingredients matter, and we're talking about the secret ingredient to great relationships. And, uh, and time is not all the same. And I was thinking, there's a word used in, in books and teaching and love languages, and it's called quality time. Quality time. And there's certainly time uh, spent that's better. We can be in a room together with people but not be connected. We can be in the house together, but be doing our own things. We, how many, I guarantee you've seen people, and maybe you've been one, that have all been in the room together and all been on your devices doing your own little thing. You're certainly not connected. It's certainly not quality time. Now, here's the problem. Every time I try to plan quality time, it doesn't always end up quality. It's kind of hard to work that out, and so my my advice is the best way to find quality time is to invest quantity time. And if you invest a, a, a length of time, an amount of time, a quantity, some of that's going to be some great quality time. Well, I want to give you today, I've given a really, really long introduction, and I want to give you a not so long uh, teaching today. Uh, how do we invest quality time into the most important relationships in our life. That's what I want to answer today. How do we invest good, quality, healthy time into the very best and most important relationships in our life? Here we go. Three things are going to be real simple. I want you to write them down. Uh, they're going to be easy to remember, but I want you to make an effort this week to do these three things. Number one, prioritize. Prioritize. Who are the most important people that you want to spend time with? Maybe it's Jesus, maybe it's your family, maybe it's friends, maybe it's your church family, maybe it's uh, people you're trying to encourage and help and reach. But we need to think about the priorities because we often tend to spend our time, spend it, do you hear that? We spend it on uh, relationships, activities, and things that maybe aren't as important to us, but they seem to grab our attention. Jesus was intentional. He spent the vast majority of his life on 12 men called his disciples. And of those disciples, he had three that got even more time. And of those three, he had one. I think of it as circles of relationships. He had his very closest, but then he had his three amigos, but then he had his 12 disciples, and he had the 70, and he had, we know there was 120 in the upper room, but we know that he taught multitudes. And we, we see that he, he would stop occasionally and help people and heal the sick, um, but he had his priorities of those that got the most of his time. Prioritize. Who in your life, including Jesus, including your family, including friends, do you want to see get the best of your time? Prioritize. Number two, that's the easy one, I hate to say it. Number two is a little tough. Prune. P-R-U-N-E. Prune. In other words, get rid of things in your life that are unfruitful, things that are unhealthy, things that are absorbing your time but not helping you. You know, I listened to a teaching recently uh, just about how to do this pruning on your time. It was really dealing with organizations or businesses, but I thought it was really helpful uh, for our own personal life. It said there's three types of activities. One is those that are necessary and fruitful. In other words, I need to do them. They need to be done. And they're good. They're fruitful. Level two, things that are uh, unnecessary and unfruitful. Unnecessary and unfruitful. Well, those are kind of a waste. And level three, those things that are, are kind of neutral, non-essential. They're not good. They're not bad. And how do we deal with that? Well, the, the advice of this teaching, which I agree with, said this, uh, we need to uh, take those level one uh, needs 
or level one relationships, level one priorities, and pour ourselves into those. They're necessary and fruitful. We need to take the, uh, the level twos, unnecessary and unfruitful, and just get rid of them. Why are we doing things that are unnecessary and unfruitful? Why are we spending time on things that don't help us? Why do we invest the greatest resource we have, time, into things that are producing nothing? Get rid of it. And then uh, level three, those things that are kind of neutral, maybe they're pastimes, maybe they're, they're time fillers, maybe they relax us or refresh us, pray about those things. Some of those are good and some are unnecessary. Keep those that are fruitful, get rid of those that are not, and pray through your list of things that are kind of middle ground. Pruning. Can I suggest that you make a don't do list? A don't do list. We always have to do lists. If I don't have one, guess what? I have a young and attractive, wonderful lady called my wife who loves to make lists. And so I always have to-do lists. And uh, that's okay, and that's uh, helpful to stay on track. But you might need a don't-do list. Things that are just wasting my time. One last thought uh, in this pruning is our text that we looked at in Acts chapter 2 talked about the New Testament church. And one of the big keys to their health and their growth was that they were together, that they had fellowship, that they spent time in community uh, of believers. Can I tell you that sometimes uh, we go to church and certainly we want a relationship with Jesus. And I certainly hope you want a relationship with your family and friends. But sometimes we don't prioritize the family of God, the body of Christ, into our number one list. And can I tell you that in addition to you uh, in relationship with Jesus and your family and your friends, that you with the family of God, the church family, is also a number one priority. It's a key to health and a key to growth, to accountability and prayer and joy. And I can't encourage you enough to connect with your uh, brothers and sisters, with your friends and family who are part of the body of Christ. Number three, so here we go. You need to, uh, number one, uh, when you are planning to invest in your relationships, prioritize, then prune, and number three, plan, P-L-A-N, plan. Make a plan. Get it on the calendar. How many times have you saw somebody that you very genuinely wanted to get together with and you looked at them with wholehearted honesty and said, we need to get together. And they said, yes, we do. And you both said, let's do it. <clears throat> and it never happened. You know why it didn't happen? Not because you didn't want to. I think you really meant it. And I think they really meant it. You know why it didn't happen? You didn't plan for it. When you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And so plan it. Put it on the calendar. I'm, I'm doing better at this. I don't know if I'm awesome at this, but I'm doing a lot better at this. I try when somebody uh, is in a conversation and we get to that point of, hey, we need to get together. We need to have coffee. We need to set, let's get out the phone. Let's get out the calendar and let's put it down. And I have found, I'm not perfect, but I've found that I do a lot better job of of connecting with friends, of having those coffee appointments, of, of connecting with people in my life when I actually schedule it. Put it down. You know, with finances, you know what we do? Because finances are important to us. We have budgets, we have financial planners, financial managers, we have estate plans, we have uh, investment portfolios, we have retirement accounts. All that's good. I'm really good. I encourage it. But if time is our most valuable possession, shouldn't we schedule, plan, budget on how we invest our time? We have to have a plan. And you know what the best investment is of time? It's in people. It's in people. People are eternal. This is a unique time in all of history, but especially in our personal history. And for a period of time, it seems that circumstances have helped us a bit with priorities. We still have to decide what to do with our time, but we have a little bit more time available. 
It's still easy to waste days. It's still easy to waste weeks. It's still easy to binge on Netflix and Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and not with people. It's still easy to fill your day with your stuff instead of filling your day with others. It's still easy, easier than ever, to forget about people that aren't living in your household. You know, there's a financial term called disposable income. It's, it's like the cash in your pocket that you can spend. It's your, it's your uh, money that is available to do what you want to do. For many of us, that's minimal. You, you know who's got it? It's your kids. They've got all the disposable income because they don't have responsibility and bills and commitments. But disposable income is that money, that resource you have that's available and free to be spent. And can I suggest that in this time, many are busy. I, I'm busy. My job is, is busier than ever. But some of the extracurriculars in life, actually most of them, if not all, have come to a halt. Uh, many of our kids' activities and things we were doing are stopped for now. So yes, there's a lot on our agenda and a lot of commitments. But yes, there is also more disposable income time in my life than, than during other times uh, of history. And my question is, what are you doing with that? What are you doing with that? You know, life is going to not return to normal, but life is going to move ahead. We will soon, praise the Lord, be able to, to leave our homes and work and drive and eat in restaurants and go out and about. We are going to have opportunities to fill our schedules back up and, and uh, sporting events will return and activities will return and jobs will return and busyness will potentially return. And while we're in this moment of time where things have slowed down a bit, can I encourage you, one, in this time, take the time to invest yourself in relationships. Set some patterns in order now so that when uh, legal restrictions and physical health restrictions are removed, we've got some patterns in place of healthy budgeting of our time. Because time is your greatest resource and it is truly the secret ingredient to great relationships. Today's Mother's Day. Could I encourage you? You know, moms do a pretty amazing job for the most part at, at investing in their family. They set such a great example for us in prioritizing their family. Can I encourage you? Make sure you likewise choose to prioritize time with your family. Can I also encourage you uh, to make Jesus a high priority in your life? Sometimes life gets busy, and, and it's not intentional. I think with the greatest of, of hearts, we, we want a relationship with Jesus, but sometimes it becomes a quick fix on Sunday morning. Sometimes it becomes a quick little prayer at dinner or bedtime, and we go through our day without much time for the King of Kings in our lives. Could we make some time for family, some time for Jesus, some time for the people who we prioritize as most important in our lives? lives. And today, don't forget to give some of that extra time to your mom. Well, I want to pray for you. We're going to wrap this service up for today, and I'm so glad you've been with us. Give me about two or three more minutes, and we're going to bring this to a close, but I hope you'll stick with me to the end, because I want to bless you and pray for you as we close. I just want to ask two things uh, as we uh, begin to end this teaching. Time one is, have you made Jesus the top priority in your life, a relationship with him. And if you'd like to make a change and begin to follow Jesus, begin to know Jesus, begin a relationship with Jesus, know you're forgiven and know you have a place in eternity with Jesus, you can start today. And I would just wanna lead you in a prayer. I would encourage you to join me. I'd encourage you to pray out loud with me and make this commitment as a start. And I'm just going to lead us. If you're a follower of Jesus, if you're a Christian, join along. If you're here watching and you want to be a follower of Jesus, join me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me, to give his life as a sacrifice 
for my sins. Today, I repent and I turn from sinful ways and I choose to follow Jesus with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, and with all my strength. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I just want to pray one more prayer for you. We've talked about time today. Can I tell you, uh, I, I, I'm working on this. I don't always do it right. I often do it wrong. I'm trying and growing and learning in this. And I'm guessing most of you are in the same boat. Can I pray for us all today? Because it's so important that we get this right. I don't want to come to the end of, of this season and feel like I've squandered the gift of time. I don't want to come to the end of my life and feel like I've squandered the gift of time. And today we have the ability to reevaluate how we invest our time. So let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you again for friends and family, for new friends and old friends that have joined today. And I bless them in the name of Jesus. And I ask for help, Lord. Help us be able to prioritize correctly what's truly important in our lives. And help us be willing to do the hard work of pruning, to, to remove those things that are unhealthy, unneeded, or unfruitful, unnecessary, that are taking up space and time and resource and not producing anything good in our life. And help us through that middle ground. There, are, there is place for fun, for recreation, for for pastimes, for rest. There's, there's all those things that fit that middle ground. Give us wisdom in filling those in to our time budget. But I ask that you help us put the very most important things first in our life and give them a place on our camp. I bless families today. Uh, let this season of, of restriction be a, a, a gift in disguise, an amazing blessing of time for families to reconnect, for families to grow, for families to bond, for families to enjoy, for families to laugh and play and, and, and talk and bond and share and establish patterns. I ask in Jesus' name, help us establish patterns now that will sustain us into the future. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, let me speak a blessing over you, and I just want to encourage you uh, as we close here. If you were blessed today, make sure you, you like uh, the video, share the video. If you're on YouTube, if you could subscribe, subscribe. That would help us and help us reach more people, and uh, I can't wait to see you back next week. Lord, may your blessing rest on each one, on each viewer. May your Holy Spirit encourage and strengthen each one. May on this Mother's Day, a special blessing and favor rest on every uh, mother and mother figure, and uh, may you give joy and peace into our hearts and strength into our minds, and may your presence saturate every home today in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hey, God bless you. Thanks again, and we'll see you back next Sunday, 1045. God bless.